Hello, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Polio Experts. Today we are here with Dr. Carolyn Sain, who is uh, one of the researchers at the Polio Eradication Department here at WHO. Carolyn, thank you for being with us uh, today. Maybe to start with, give us a little bit about your background, uh, what you do here. Okay, I work in the uh, Polio Department with the Research and Product Development Group. So we, we work with um, countries and regions and conduct a lot of scientific research um, at that field level and we, we bring the results together and those results are then used to drive you know, policy and recommendations um, to eliminate polio, to eradicate polio. And it's not just wild poliovirus, but increasingly also circulating vaccine-derived poliovirus, isn't it? Absolutely. So what we've seen more and more in the last 17 years is that um, as, we, as we start to sort of look out for um, circulating uh, vaccine-derived poliovirus,es we find that we're finding more cases, um, not just due to wild poliovirus. They tend to go down. Um, last year we had 37 cases of wild poliovirus, but um, the vaccine-derived virus from the oral poliovirus vaccine has come up um, and that's something we need to address. Yeah. So for me, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a technical expert. Can you give me the basics uh, of what actually is a circulating vaccine-derived polio uh, virus? Okay, what I might do is start with uh, what is polio and how that is spread and then we can talk about the vaccine, the oral poliovirus vaccine and then the actual um, vaccine-derived poliovirus. Does that sound like a reasonable um, progression? Great, we have a flip chart for her, thank you. So polio is a paralytic disease and it affects mainly children under the age of five and it's spread person to person. So if we have people in the community that what we call are susceptible, these are people that um, pick up the virus in the environment, often with contaminated um, food or if they don't have access to toilets or proper water sanitation then that virus gets in orally and it goes through their gut and the virus will start to replicate um, and it will go through the, mem uh, the lining of the gut and get taken up to the nervous system and it produces a particular type of paralysis which is a floppy paralysis um, and that's uh, a, f a flaccidity, a flaccid paralysis and it happens quite quickly within a matter of days. So the, the child will have a fever, um, will be uh, floppy, often in one limb, a lower limb. But what also happens is the virus then passes through the gut and it gets shed for even a matter of weeks in the stool. And that is still infectious and can infect another person in the community. And so you can imagine if you have different people in this population that don't have protection for polyvirus, then this virus can spread quite quickly. And so this is for wild poliovirus, yes. and as long as it keeps finding the wild poliovirus uh, susceptible children, meaning not vaccinated children, it will continue to survive and will continue to spread in a community. That's right. Okay, that makes, makes sense. It has no um, preferences in terms of, you know, um, who the person is as long as they have not been protected and that's through being given the appropriate doses of vaccine. And of yeah. course if, if, the, the, if this child is vaccinated then he or she will not uh, uh, catch the, 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 or he might catch the virus but it's not going to have an, any effect and then... They'll be uh, protected the, from the paralysis. And, and the virus essentially dies out if it does not find any more susceptible children. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense for wild poliovirus. But what happens with the circulating vaccine-derived virus? What I might do is maybe explain the two types of vaccines that we have for polio, mm -hmm. um, and then we can talk about the specific oral poliovirus vaccine and how that um, is associated with the vaccine-derived poliovirus infections. Um, so, you want a new sheet? Yeah, that would be great. So to protect against poliovirus infection, we have two vaccines. One is inactivated poliovirus vaccine and one is oral poliovirus vaccine. Which do you want to start with first? 
I think let's start with here with, uh, with IPV. Okay, so this stands for inactivated polyvirus vaccine. And what that means is that the polyvirus in the vaccine has been inactivated. When it's given to the child for protection, um, it's given as an injection. And that will protect the child from paralysis. So if the child's exposed to um, the poliovirus, um, they won't have the paralysis. However, what the IPV does not do is that if the virus um, comes into the child's um, if, the, if the child is in contact with the virus, um, the virus can still go through the gut and multiply and still be spread through the feces. So the virus still is able to move through the gut and um, not cause paralysis, but it's still shed out and can still potentially um, infect other children or spread in the environment. So in other words, uh, if, if a child is given IPV uh, and they are then infected with wild poliovirus, they will not get the paralysis, which is great. No but disease. They can, no disease in that child, but they can still spread the wild poliovirus to other children. Absolutely, And so yes. actually with this vaccine, uh, we cannot interrupt the transmission chain of the virus, which is of course what we're after in an eradication process. Yes. Is, that, is that correct? Okay. That's right. Okay, I think I understand. And uh, what, about, uh, what about OPV then? How does, uh, how does it work? So OPV, um, oral poliovirus vaccine, is made from a live poliovirus. So it's given um, in the same manner that uh, the, the virus would enter the body. So it's given orally as two drops. There we go. And that, those two drops then go through the gut and uh, protect not just the child from paralysis, but actually because it's gone through the gut, it um, induces uh, an immunity at the gut level. And what that does, it reduces um, the shedding. Um, so if the child's exposed to poliovirus, um, the amount of virus that's shed and the duration that the virus is shed for is reduced greatly. So really to interrupt poliovirus transmission or what we call circulation, we need OPV. We need OPV to be able to, to cut that um, transmission in the, in the population. So in a sense, this has a public health benefit because yes. it not only protects the child, but also that particular child, should he or she be infected with wild poliovirus, is much less likely to pass it on to other yes. children then. Uh, We've broken that cycle of transmission to other children. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, the really the, the, the primary reason why we use OPV in the eradication effort. It is. Um, but, but what about va the, this risk that uh, we keep hearing about of vaccine-derived poliovirus? What happens in vaccine-derived poliovirus? That's a bit of a mouthful. But um, what happens in that situation is if you have um, children in a community where the, what we call the population immunity is quite low, like many children in that population are not protected. Um, if, you, if some of the children are given uh, OPV, that will go through the gut and the virus that's in the OPV starts to mutate. Um, it can then, um, there's small chance, but it can get into another child and as it passes to their gut, mutate some more. And if you have many children that are not fully protected in that community, this virus can go through and replicate many, many times. And it can replicate to a point where it has features of the wild poliovirus. And then, then you have the problem of uh, vaccine-derived poliovirus. And when you say features of the wild poliovirus, meaning that it can it, cause... Paralysis, yes. cases, yes. How long does that take? How long uh, would the would the virus, this the vaccine virus, need to continue to find susceptible children? I think the mutations take a while. So the virus has to travel through the gut of an unprotected uh, of a of child that's receiving the vaccine, and then travel through another gut and another gut of uh, of, of um, children in the community. So um, it can take up to a year for that to manifest. Um, a year, so in other words, 
it needs to, this vaccine virus strain, or the, the strain originally contained in, o, in OPV, needs to continue to find Motiv unvaccinated children for a period of, of, of 12 months before it, it has essentially mutated to the point where it can again cause paralysis. It, it takes about 12 months for the rates of mutation where mm. that, that um, where the virus um, behaves like a wild polio virus. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. So it's, it's actually not so much a side effect of the vaccine then because that child who received the original dose 12 months ago, that child is absolutely it's fine. Protected. But it's more a, a factor of low the population, population immunity. Yes. So in fact, it's almost then it, it be, it behaves like like a new virus strain. It, it's quote unquote infecting other children and yes. uh, okay. So the way to deal with that is you really need high um, population immunity. You need all the children really in the community to be vaccinated and protected um, because uh, if you have enough children that are not um, even the vaccine derived polyvirus that, that will find those children. Okay, now what about the day that we eradicate wild polio viruses? Uh, what happens then? Because we continue to use OPV. We can't. So we know that in order to eradicate polio, we have to eventually cease all OPV. If there is even a small risk of vaccine derived polio virus, we can't use OPV. That has got to be phased out. So once we eradicate, we will need to um, find an alternative. At the stage, it's IPV. Um, there may be other types of vaccines that are non-infectious in the future, but we will have to progress and move away from OPV, and that is slowly happening. But if I, if I understand correctly, so we need OPV in order to eradicate wild polioviruses because of its unique ability to stop the, the, the spread of the virus? Yes. But then after we've done that, we need to stop using this vaccine. Yes. Uh, and bef while that's happening in that transition process, we need to make sure we have enough IPV mm -hmm. to then raise the keep the population immunity high while we're phasing out OPV. Fascinating. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a balance. <laughs> it's complicated but fascinating, uh, fascinating subject. Uh, but to, to my mind, certainly, it's cleared uh, a lot of things up and, and explained very nicely what what are these vaccine derived viruses and also just the difference uh, uh, between OPV and IPV. Carolyn, thank you so much oh, for being with us and explaining to, uh, this to us. And thank you for watching and uh, see you on another episode of uh, Coffee with Polio Experts. Thank you.